and welcome to Women Developing Brilliance. I'm your host, Casey Rossi. It's my great pleasure to present interesting stories of creative women sharing their message and lighting up the world with their presence and offerings. Get ready to be inspired. You can learn more about creating a business that you love by visiting kcrossi.com. Enjoy! My guest today is Pragito Dove. She is a global authority on expressive meditation and the founder of the number one expressive meditation training school in North America. I loved my conversation with Pragito. We talked about one of my favorite topics, which is meditation. I have been a longtime meditator. In fact, September was my 30th year of meditating on a daily basis. And honestly, I don't know who I would be without it at this point. So we talked a lot about peace, prosperity, passion, how to lead from the heart, and so much more great information for those of you that are interested in tuning in and dropping away from the headspace and more into the heart space so you can lead in a very full and fulfilling way. I hope you enjoy this episode. Pragito, welcome to the show. I'm really looking forward to having you as a guest and diving into one of my absolute favorite topics, which is meditation. Well, thank you so much for having me, Casey. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here, and I absolutely love talking about meditation. Yes. Awesome. So before we begin, one of the questions that I was just curious about is, Is Pragito Dove your birth name, or did it come about from a transformation or maybe a pivotal shift in your life? Well, it it represents a pivotal shift shift in my life. Uh, My name, Pragito, was given to me by the enlightened mystic Osho, and Mm -hmm. it means song. Actually, the full name he gave me was Ma Santosh Pragito, Santosh meaning contentment, and uh, pregito meaning song. So I took uh, the pregito and uh, made that my legal name, pregito dove. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. I had a feeling you can always tell with names that just kind of catch you as being super unique that some kind of cool story behind it. So thank you for sharing that. So let's dive in. How did you get interested in meditation? Well, uh, I had a very challenging childhood. I had a cruel, abusive mother, and I was actually terrified of my mother. And I promised myself when I was a small child that I would find a way to heal myself because I knew that deep down in my heart, my soul, that that I that it was possible to be happy in life, to, to have joy and love and all those good things. So I just promised myself when I was old enough, I would find a way to find that. And I did. Uh, but I had to do some seeking uh, and searching. And I heard about Osho and his meditations. He was in... Pune in India at the time. He passed away in 1990, uh, 20, about 20 years ago. Um, so first of all, I heard about these expressive meditations of his, which got my, got my, got my interest because I had no success with meditation at all, with just sitting, just sitting in silence because I had such a crazy amount of turmoil in my mind. I had so much emotional turmoil and a lot of physical stress in my body. I used to smoke about 30 cigarettes a day and had a recurring back pain. And so I could not get into meditation at all in the the classic uh, idea of meditation. But when I heard about these expressive techniques, I had to try them. And I I tried some of them, like there's a shaking meditation, a laughter meditation, dancing, humming, a gibberish, a dynamic. There's a whole range of them. 
And I was so taken with them that I traveled to India with my baby son, as I was in the process of a divorce at the time, uh, to, to learn more because I felt like I had my back up against the wall. I hadn't found anything that worked. And when my son was born, I, I just had to find something because I knew I was full of all this emotional turmoil and I didn't want to transmit all that to him. And then we have another unhappy person on the planet. So I, so I was quite almost desperate to find something that worked. And it, thank you. Yeah, that's incredible. And how long did it take you on your journey, like when you were doing a deep dive search and just knowing in your heart and soul that there was a better way and that joy could be there for you? How many years did it take you before you found what worked? Well, it's, that's, it's a little bit hard to say. I mean, it, the, the feeling started as a small child, but I couldn't do anything about it till I was really in my 20s after I'd finish college. Uh, and then from when I went to India, um, it took it took a few years. I did, I ended up in India uh, training in the in these meditations very extensively. I was invited to train as a as a teacher, which I didn't understand why they would want me as a teacher because I felt like I was such a mess. But it turns out they could see something in me that I couldn't see in myself at the time. So that turned out to be a good idea. But it took a few years, yes. And I think if for, for the, everybody listening, it, it really is going to – one thing, it depends is on your commitment and your willingness. And I, I had and I still have a very strong commitment to – transforming myself to healing myself to being the best version of myself I can be so that's an important part that you are willing to do the work that you're willing every day to do something towards your goal um yeah. so so yeah uh it, it can take a few years but I had some deep wounds you know so it if it's a person that isn't wounded as deeply as I was, then then it can go much quicker. Sure. Absolutely. I'm curious because there are many different goals when people embark on a meditation path. And they could be something as, you know, as simple as lowering blood pressure or getting grounded or feeling more centered or reducing anxiety. And then they could of course move to loftier goals of you know, becoming one with their overflow and enlightenment. I'm curious with the difference between classic versus expressive techniques, the expressive techniques such as the laughter and shaking and different, um, you know, varieties that you mentioned, they seem to be keeping you in the body. And I'm wondering for someone whose meditation goal is enlightenment, can they still experience that through an expressive technique? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is about the body, I'm glad you brought that up because what is enlightenment? Enlightenment is utter relaxation. That's what enlightenment is. It's not something outside of us up in the sky. It is a feeling of uh, deep peace and ease and relaxation with life itself and everything that life presents to us in every moment. And the point of the expressive techniques is to throw out the inner clutter, throw out our anger, our heal our pain, and um, come and live deep down in our center, which is two inches below the navel. Because what happened to me and what happens to most people who have a lot of emotional turmoil or a lot of chatter in the mind is we tend to either live in the head or want to just live outside the body because of the pain which you feel in the body. So 
The most difficult part of meditation I have found with people is that when you close your eyes, the, that in that moment, then there's the mind chatter seems like it's the worst it's ever been, although actually it's always been there. And you're also aware of any emotional turmoil you might have. Definitely. And it's so interesting because so many people even will comment that two minutes or five minutes could feel like an eternity because I think we're very used to on a whole living on the devices in our screens, you know, scrolling through social. And as you mentioned, very much living in our head most of the time, unless it's a mindful practice of ours. I'm curious if you have tips on how we can stay more in the present moment, especially during these times of chaos. Yes, that is that is a great question. And staying in the present moment, because that's what meditation is. Meditation is being in the present moment. Meditation is awareness. So the first thing is to be aware if you are in the present moment or if you're in the future or the past, because those are our three options. And what can help us is, first of all, to be aware of that. And you have to make a decision to bring your awareness to each moment of each day. Am I present? Am I present here now? Because most of the time, actually, we're not. But a lot of the time we are without realizing that that is what meditation is. And I have found personally, and so have so many of my students, that when we do some of these expressive techniques to like throw out this inner clutter, it makes it much easier and quicker to drop deep down inside to our center. Mm. I can see that absolutely. And you have to be conscious enough to even ask the question, am I present now? Exactly. Yes, you do. You do. <laughs> um, so even, even having this conversation is good for those listening because it's just to bring it to your awareness and ask yourself, am I in the present moment? And, mm. and then the thing to look out for is to not judge yourself. Judgment lives in the mind. And uh, people who've done research say that about 80% of our thoughts are negative. But certainly a large percentage of them are. And what we do is we judge ourselves with a lot of self-criticism. And that is not helpful. <laughs> It's not helpful for anything, really. <laughs> it is absolutely true. And I, I believe the research continues to say of those 80% of the automatic negative thoughts, that there is a great percentage of those that are duplicates. duplicates. Every single day, we're just kind of repeating the same automatic negative thoughts. And I see this come up often, especially with female entrepreneurs when it comes to knowing their value and knowing what to charge. I know you speak about how we can change our money blueprints, and I would love it if you could share a little bit of wisdom on that topic. Yes, um, definitely. You're absolutely right about, uh, especially women healers, um, have a difficulty charging for their services or putting their rates up and so on. So, when when we're born, depending the family, the culture we're born into, we are blueprinted um, with a certain way of looking at life, and we we just accept that as children. Um, sometimes, some some children like I was, I was very aware that I didn't like what I was being taught about life when I was a child. But for many people, it's unconscious and they, they are blueprinted to look at life a certain way. And certainly if we want to look at money, um, because there's a, there's a fear, lack and scarcity mentality that is prevalent in, in many cultures 
um, and this has been ha handed down generation to generation. And, and what that says is there isn't enough money, there isn't enough time, there isn't enough of this, there isn't enough of that. And, and many people live in that mindset. And then they hit this, when they become an entrepreneur, they kind of hit a glass ceiling where they reach, they reach this place of where that conditioning in them is saying, okay, that's, you've made enough money this month or this year. You, you know, you can't expect to make any more money than that. Um, money is the root of all evil. And we have all these phrases there which lurk around in our subconscious mind and prevent us from having um, an ability to attract more money in and to charge more. Absolutely. How can we break through that self and glass ceiling? Well, the first thing is to become aware of it. Awareness is always the beginning. See if you see if you notice if you keep running up into the same pattern of behavior like I used to was uh, I would run around with my credit cards, you know, keep keep um stacking up a great amount of money that I owed on my credit cards and I pay it off and then I'd run it up again the same. And I just didn't seem to be getting anywhere till I made a decision that I was fed up with it. If other people could have a lot of money, so could I, you know, what was different between me and them. So the decision was important. The awareness was important. And then um, I always recommend hypnotherapy. I mean, I, because I am a hypnotherapist, so I know how it works, that hypnotherapy works with the subconscious patterns to change them with, mm -hmm. with the person's permission, of course. It's like updating the software, you know, um, because it, it, it's actually very easy. We can simply go in there and change old beliefs, old decisions that you made, old habits, and create new ones. I mean, I've done it myself to be a very successful business owner now where I am now. So it can certainly be done, and I see that with all my clients. So that is definitely an option. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I know, Perdito, you have over 20-plus years of experience being an entrepreneur, and I'm wondering what your biggest business lesson has been in all of this time. Biggest, my biggest lesson as an entrepreneur. Yes, I think it's. I think it is to stay the course. Mm. Stay in business. Believe in what it is you offer, what you do, your your own own your authority on what you do or own your medicine is another way of saying that um, because there's ups and downs, as I'm sure you know too, Casey, that in business everything isn't always an upward trajectory. Um, we hit difficult obstacles and, and in a way it's almost like the business grows as we grow. So I've had to keep up leveling myself so that I can expand to reach more people because that's always my goal is to reach more people with the benefits of all these meditations and the benefits of the hypnotherapy work I do um, and to stay with it, to not give up. You know, I think a lot of people are expecting more immediate results in fact, I just had a coffee chat today with a colleague, and it's her first year in business, and she's already feeling exasperated because she's been, you know, pedaled to the ground from January till now with learning and growing and, you know, doing and, and launching, and it's kind of like, wait, why isn't it happening? And I do think your advice on staying the course and being patient and also understanding your capacity, your capacity to up level is a very key element there. Yeah. And I would say that many of us want that automatic abundance. And so in that, why does it feel so hard sometimes to achieve it? Well, because fear and doubt come in and 
the self-judgment, which I've mentioned before, we start, it starts to bring up our deeper issues like, you know, maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I should be smarter in this area or smarter in that area or maybe I'm just not really a very good healer. And all those doubts and fears come up. And then a very another very interesting thing I found is, uh, this might sound funny, the fear of success because – for example, one thing I had to do some hypnotherapy work on actually was being more successful than my father because he had a job. He didn't have his own business. And I realized at one point I had this, I guess it was a fear or an embarrassment of making more money than he did, being way more successful than him. And I mentioned my father because he was the only breadwinner in my family growing up. So we have these unconscious patterns in our subconscious that can be be uh, obstacles, if you like, within ourselves. And I think the best investment that we can make as an entrepreneur is to invest in ourselves. And Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up in regard to that. Here. And I think that it's very popular in the female entrepreneurial space to dim our light, whether we're trying to stay at an even level with our spouse or partner or, you know, any of those old paradigms or programming where man should be the breadwinner. Yeah. I think there is a lot of self-imposed glass ceilings and, and a lot of dimming light. It's changing. And I feel like there is a female rising. Do you agree with that? And how are you seeing it show up in your world? Oh, absolutely. There's a female rising and absolutely there has to be. I mean, I I do think that women are naturally um, better healers and have a just have a better way of communicating and bringing people together if there's divisiveness, if there's arguments um, because I think in gen this is a big generalization I'm saying here, <laughs> women in general are more grounded and more connected to their heart and their intuition because the, the, this, the way that our society has been so male dominated for centuries, because this is, this is the mind, which is the ego. And I think what needs to happen is that we all need to come down from either to the heart and be ruled by the heart so that we can um, access the wisdom of the heart and the wisdom of compassion and kindness and not see it as weak, but it's actually strength. And I, I believe that love, which of course comes from the heart, is the greatest healing energy on the planet, and that's where our power is too. Mm, I love that. We all need bumper stickers for that. It's, it's beautiful. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Did you ever just wish there was a group of high vibe women entrepreneurs that you could hang out with? A place where you could share your wins, get a biz question asked, and be around people that just get you? Well, there is, my friend. It's my Women Developing Brilliance Facebook group. I created a place on the web where like minds and open hearts could continue the conversations that we start here on the podcast. Fulfill your desire to develop friendships with women from around the globe, women who are on the solopreneur journey just like you. Now more than ever, we are craving authentic connections. Believe me, your voice matters, your work matters, and having the support of a close-knit community can make all the difference in the world. So head over to Facebook and go to facebook.com slash groups slash Women Developing Brilliance and request to join my private Women Developing Brilliance Facebook group, the gathering place for heart-centered female entrepreneurs looking to create an impact, increase their income, and connect deeply with themselves and others in the process. I can't wait to welcome you in my Women Developing Brilliance Facebook group, where you'll be encouraged to introduce yourself, ask a question, and meet other ambitious lightworkers just like you. 
Again, it's facebook.com slash groups slash women developing brilliance. I'll catch you there. I'm curious. You talked about the money blueprint being set from a very early stage in our life. And I'm wondering for the listeners that we have a lot of spiritual oriented listeners and people that, you know, are very dedicated to their morning routine and rituals, whether it be meditation, journaling, yoga, and so forth, and even tapped into manifesting and tapped into the law of abundance. And they're not seeing the results and they're getting a little frustrated. And so I'm wondering from your viewpoint, Pravito, if you feel that these results that we're seeing on a physical level are part of the karmic destiny for that individual or is it a lack of something else? Oh, what a great question. Yes. Well, and, I mean, another area of expertise of mine is the law of attraction. And and with that, I, I always suggest there's three simple steps. The first step is to ask for what you want very clearly, because the more clear you are about what you want, the more likely you are to get it. And it turns out a lot of people don't really know what they want. Um, and so that's the important first step. Ask very clearly for what you want. Like, I want three new clients this month, or I want to bring in $40,000 this month. You know, very specific and very clear. Mm -hmm. The second, the second st step in this process is to um, give it attention. Like, if, if, for example, if you want three new clients this month, then put put that out there. Put out whether it's social media, your newsletter, your phone calls. Um, write down lists of prospects of people you've talked to. Maybe there's some new people you can talk to. Maybe there's some networking things you can do on Zoom or something like that. But put attention to marketing yourself so that you 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 know, you can attract clients or prospects to start with. And then there's the third step. And the third step is the most difficult for people. And the third step is allowing mm. and receiving. That's so huge. So very huge. And I, you're right. There is a fear of loss of control if we were just going to let go and allow or even surrender into the success. And I feel that many people, myself included, are pros at step one and two. And when it comes to step three, we fall short. And many times then we don't experience the desired result or goal. Yes, exactly. And that's why, like within your question, you're saying, you know, Somebody you mentioned had been working very hard, not seeing results yet, and getting frustrated. So the getting frustrated is getting in your way because yeah. the law of attraction works on energy. And, and the law of attraction is, is just a one-trick pony. All it does is match, and it matches your energy. It doesn't care who you are or whether you're a famous Hollywood movie star or a rickshaw driver in Calcutta. It doesn't care. All it does is match your energy. So if the energy you're putting out is fear or tension or stress then or doubt, then guess what? You know, it, that's what you get back. It's, it's impeding you to get frustrated. So what we have to do, because the feeling state is the most important in the law of attraction, which is our subconscious. And for our body, it's like the neck down. <laughs> the, the neck down is the feeling state, which is about 95% of us. So what we have to do is pay attention to our feeling state at all times. Because I do it like a scale of one to 10. So we could say one is a very negative feeling state and 10 is a high vibe feeling state of love and joy and gratitude. And what you want to do is keep yourself up there at an eight, nine, 10. This is mm -hmm. so the laughter meditation is extremely helpful for law of attraction. If you make a practice of the laughter meditation, for example, 
And again, the awareness. Notice if you're getting angry, impatient, frustrated, um, into going into doubt and self-criticism and that kind of thing. First of all, just be aware that you're doing that. Then the second thing is do not judge yourself. You must have compassion for yourself. You know, it is what it is. Have great compassion for yourself and then see what you can do to bring your vibes up to an 8, 9, 10. That's beautiful. And I think for a lot of the high achieving women that listen to this, it's really um, simple to be able to just break it down where you're talking about tuning in and raising your vibration and dropping from the headspace and into the heart space. And I know because, you know, many of us have lived in more of the mental realm for years and years that it's a practice. Yeah. It's not going to be like an overnight shift. Um, I'm still lingering on the karmic destiny bit. And I'm wondering, Pragito, if you feel that, do you feel that we have the power to shift our destiny karma? Oh, totally we do. I've shifted mine. Yes, absolutely. And again, actually, I would mention the hypnotherapy here because sometimes, especially with healers, of course, I, I attract a lot of healers to work with, um, is we want to heal any past lives in which, for example, we might have been burned at the stake or tortured by the Inquisition or something like, the, you know, hounded because we're a witch, um, because then we come in this lifetime as a healer again, and then it's like, oh, well, who wants to be a healer when last time I got burned at the stake, you know? Um and so certainly healing can be done in hypnotherapy that I know of and maybe in other modalities um, around those past life experiences so that we heal the fear of being a healer in this lifetime too and find the courage and the, um, the strength of spirit to speak up and offer our services out into the world because they are so badly needed. Um, so that is definitely something. And and the other thing is healing our lineage, which I've also had to do. I sure took on a lot of things this lifetime. <laughs> I mean, healing my own karma and my family lineage karma. But that's what, you know, that's apparently what I signed up to do this this lifetime. So that's okay. Um, so I've done, I've done a lot of personal work around that because, you know, there's a lot of, um, poverty consciousness and fear and lack in my family lineage, which I've done a tremendous amount of work to heal, not just for myself, but for the, but for the souls who were in my lineage so that when they come back, into another lifetime, they will they will start at a higher vibe place. So yeah, what a blast. that's incredible. I'm curious. Other than the law of attraction, how else can we use the spiritual laws to create real world success? Well, um, the the spiritual laws. First of all, we always start with awareness. You you must bring awareness to your habits to your um, connection to yourself, which is what meditation helps you with, to have that connection to yourself and your soul or your spirit, if you like that word better, um, to the divine. Because we are, we are all divine beings in a body. We are also abundant beings in an abundant universe. And it's very important to connect to your divine self and ask for divine help. So it could be your angels, because everybody has a guardian angel, and we're all surrounded by uh, angels and asking archangels. But we have to ask for help. They, they, um they can't just help us if we don't ask for the help because of free will. So ask your angels for help or your guides 
or whoever it is that you pray for. And there's no judgment on here on who it is you pray to. It doesn't matter if it's that higher power, however you see it, if it's God, you know, it all works. It, it, how it, it's, it's what it means to you personally. I've worked with people who pray to Jesus. I've worked with people who pray to the Buddha. I've worked with people who pray to different, all kinds of different ascended masters. It doesn't matter who they are, but just that there's the awareness of that divine connection we all have, which can bring in a huge amount of help and support, especially if you're feeling fear or unworthy or that you don't matter or what you have to offer doesn't matter. And if you're going into those places, then absolutely um, connect to your spiritual source. Absolutely. And it really goes back to surrenderance and allowing and receiving and letting go a little bit and realizing in a way it's so um, refreshing and relieving to drop the mindset that everything is your responsibility. Yes. So I think it's just really beautiful to tap into that higher force and, and to lay down any ego and to ask for help. Um, that's, that's awesome. So I'm curious what your number one tip for heart let led leaders is. Well, <laughs> listen to your heart, uh, listen to the wisdom of your heart and trust yourself because mm. when you're a leader, you know, likely you'll get criticized criticism from people, people that have the courage to stand up, stand out from the crowd and lead can get criticized. So you need to be very strongly connected to yourself, to your to the wisdom of your heart, the wisdom of your body, and your higher self or your soul, your spirit, whatever word you like, um, because then you lead from that place. And, yes, you are going to be very willing to listen to people. Listening is a very important quality. First of all, listening to yourself and then listening to others help mm -hmm. helps i think a leader to really um be a very good excellent leader i totally agree i think that compassionate listening is one of the best skills that you can have and this has just been such a beautiful a beautiful conversation i would love it if you could let our listeners know how they can learn more about you and your expressive meditation training school yes so my website www.discovermeditation.com is where you can find out about my trainings, my meditation trainings, uh, which will start in January going through all next year. And um, the other thing that I have, I just released my second book. It's called Lunchtime Enlightenment, and it was published just in August. It's on Amazon. It's a number one bestseller on Amazon. And the subtitle of the book is Expressive Meditations for Manifesting Peace, Prosperity, and Passion. And there's a... I love it. I love it. it sounds like a trifecta to me. Congratulations on that accomplishment. And I will make sure to put those links in the show notes so people can get their hands on your wisdom and, and all the that you talked about today. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, this has just been a fabulous conversation. Thank you so much for having me here. Truly, truly enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on women developing brilliance. If so, head on over to Apple iTunes and subscribe to this podcast. And I'd be grateful if you could leave a review or rating so more people can benefit from these inspirational stories about the solopreneur journey. Thank you.